99X in the morning, X. You're about to hear something very rare happen. It's very rare that everybody in this family, Will, Steve, Jill, that everybody is awake at the same time. It's rare. Oh, awake. You're right. Rare. Especially because Will has bizarre hours. Well, he has well a lot of things bizarre. And so they're all going to be in here at 920 because I told them it's forced family fun. We're going to have a game and we're going to see who knows the most about music. That's what we're about to find out. Alternative music. Who's your money on? Mm, this is going to be a tough one. I mean, you got the College of Musical Knowledge, know, Self-Proclaimed. Planet Jill. The Steve mm-hmm. Show. You got yeah. Will. So everybody will be in here at 920 and we're going to try a new game out on them. But right now, we must sleaze. Presented by McDonald's. Best part about working at McDonald's is the people. Oh, the final box office numbers are in. Hanging in at number one, of course, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, 51.6 million. Speak No Evil at two, Deadpool and Wolverine. Are you surprised at number three? Am I a Racist for And Reagan, that's the Dennis Quaid movie, at number five. Oh, Leslie, I just got a note from um, management. They said that if you would please let Leslie know, we need to go ahead and cover the college football top 25 but tell her it's only okay to do the top two so if you could just go ahead and i guess they want you to do the top two barnes i was gonna just defer to you oh uh, okay uh, Uh, thanks for asking georgia at number two and uh wait who's number one must be a typo the university of texas uh number one uh back to you are you inserting, you're inserting yourself oh, no. management. into my celebrity No, that choice. was management. Back to you, Leslie. Back to you. Okay. You know, we played that bizarre audio from uh, Britney Spears, you know, talk. That one? No, 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 that was not the Oh, that right was audio. Shannon Sharp. Sorry, wrong. <laughs> you're talking about when she talked like a little mouse. She talked like an alien, but I thought this was very telling. Have you seen her ex, Sam Ascari, wanting to be an action hero? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was on the cover of The Hollywood Reporter. He actually looked pretty good. He has locked himself into a resume-building mode. I don't know if he wants to be the next Arnold, Dwayne Johnson, Jean-Claude Van Damme, but uh, he's been in a lot of movies. Sexy Santa in 2021. I'm sure you saw that one, right? But no. he's. I mean, he's a trainer, right? He's been in movies doing like featured extra stuff, or has he been actually yeah. a movie... Like, Talking. He's been in, he's he's been in shows, Sexy Santa, in an episode of um, Hacks, and then some larger roles, supporting cast of this summer's Jackpot, oh. an action comedy on Prime. Good for him. You know the one with Aquafina, um, and then third season of The Traitors, which won at the Emmy. So who knows? Maybe Sam will be the next action hero. Yeah, going that reality route though, you're going to tarnish your shots. I think the more you get deeper on that side. Wow. They don't take a lot a lot of those people seriously. James McAvoy uh, is now speaking out about Joaquin Phoenix. Remember Joaquin just walked out of that movie recently? Well, he's talking about how Joaquin exited a movie called Split two weeks before filming. The great Joaquin Phoenix was actually attached to that one. Is That's that, my understanding, yeah. Is that, is that weird stepping into a role when they've gone down another road with an actor at first and maybe it's in that director's mind? <laughs> no, definitely not. Because I think there's, I'm confident enough to think that I'll do it better anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I just like saying... Are you joking? The wrong thing. Um, uh, no, you're kidding. He's an amazing no, actor. Amazing. I think he'd give a very different performance sure. to the one I did, but I think he'd give an incredible performance. Sometimes coming in last minute is the best way. Not to overthink it. Or, yep, yeah, exactly. And uh, I think he ditched it like two weeks before they started shooting. Wow. It was really last minute. All of a sudden, that man, you get that reputation. That's a tough it's one a to get. It's a little shocking. Yeah. Who's going to want to hire you? Well, people are still talking about the Emmys and how did Hacks beat the bear at the very end with all the momentum? Well, some of the analysts are saying, you know, people just love Gene Smart, but they're also saying this, Barnes, which I have said, the bear is not a comedy. Are you laughing watching the bear? No. So this keeps being a story. Why can't they just fix it? Why can't they put it in another category? I mean, listen, it won big time. Like, I think it won 11, beating its own record. So we'll see. But I've been saying this all along, and no one's listening to me, Barnes. Well, maybe we should reclassify it like as a country station or something, and maybe we can win something. <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, what the hell? That is so not a comedy. 
Question for you. How much do you think Tom Cruise got paid for that huge Olympic stunt? It's going to surprise you. I would have thought he would have done that for free. I would have thought he did. That, did he? Yeah. It's promo. And he insisted on doing all of the stunts himself. Yeah. He got on a plane. He landed in L.A. at 4 a.m., filmed the scenes where he pulls into a military plane. In L.A., he does two jumps out of the thing. He didn't like the first one, so he did a second jump. Then he helicoptered from Palmdale to the Hollywood sign, filmed one until five, one until five, and then went back to Burbank and flew back to London. All for free. I will say mission accomplished. Good job. And here's another question for you. How much do you think Billy Joel generated and made from his 10-year residency at Madison Square Garden? A billion. I mean, 104 shows, sold 1.9 million tickets. No, he cleared and made $266 million. I would have guessed more than that. I thought so too, but that's what he made. And How do you do a 10-year residency? That just means you only played there for 10 years? Yeah, 10 years. He did this residency there. But like every month? Like How often was he playing? I thought he was playing weekly. Wow, okay. Did you see this big news? The Warp Tour may be coming back in 2025? Well, are all of our artists going to be in jail somewhere or, <laughs> like, or hiding? I don't on. know who's going to play it. Come on. I know you're a Suits fan, correct? Absolutely love it. Well, uh, Patrick J. Adams told this really funny story about Suits. At the Austin, Texas TV Festival's Suits Retrospective. I'm surprised you weren't there. This is one of the first times, this is when Suits was just becoming really popular. And uh, so it was that first moment of like, oh my God, people are like kind of looking at me uh, on a plane or whatever. And so I was sitting in the back of the plane on a trip and uh, we get to the end and bing, and everybody stands up to get their bags. And there's people like these two girls way down at the end. And they turn and some one of them sees me and you see the lights, the guy, like the lights go on and she's like, She's like, oh, my God, there he is. And so the whole plane goes. <laughs> they're all looking at me. They have no idea who I am because she's the only one watching Suits. And, she, and, and they're, like, looking at me. And she goes, no, 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 that's the guy from Suits to her friend. Uh, and she's like, I don't know. What, what is Suits? I don't know what Suits is. And she's like, it's amazing. It's about Aww. two lawyers. One's hot, and he's the other one. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole and the whole plane just goes oh, <laughs> oh my god oh my god ouch that's funny yeah he's not the hot one that's your celebrity sleaze barnes